throughout America's heartland and beyond. They will forever be known as the team that simply refused to quit. Just call them the Comeback Cardinals. Portraits of personal resurgence, possessing a collective will to win, defying both baseball convention and the odds, whether it was battling for a berth in postseason play, soaring past the NL's best, and the Cardinals have done it, the National League champions, or surviving a fall classic. Two more to go. The relentless spirit of St. Louis, come on boys, let's go, persevered time yeah! and time yeah! again. Major League Baseball Productions presents The Cardinals are world champs in 2011. The 2011 World Series film. Every team brings hope to spring training, and the Cardinals were no different. After all, they had two of the game's top pitchers. Oh boy, Tony. And the most productive player in all of baseball. Still, the Cardinals' spring camp was far from serene, for there were contract issues left unresolved. That in itself puts somewhat of a dark cloud over the whole thing. And then just a couple of days later, Adam Wainwright, who was a, a Cy Young type pitcher, he's done for the year. A huge blow for the St. Louis Cardinals today. Adam Wainwright will indeed need Tommy John surgery. He will miss the entire 2011 season. Yeah, no question. It was a, it was a hit. You can't replace a guy that's a, the Cy Young caliber guy that's got a chance to go out and win 20 games. But immediately the guy said, we expected adversity. It's a big hit to take. We've got the season ahead of us, and, and, and we're going to deal with it. But those ominous clouds that loomed over the team in Florida made their way north once the season got underway. Now Albert got off to a slow start. He seemed frustrated, and the bullpen came up short. The air has been let out of the ballpark right now. The Cardinals were running in circles. This is and the Giants are going to win the game! But after their two and six start, a few bright spots emerged, particularly the play of one of their key off-season acquisitions. Former division rival Lance Berkman was looking to rebound from a season marred by injuries. I felt like in my heart, you know, last year was not a, an indication of where I was from a skill standpoint. Certainly felt like I had a lot more to offer. First pitch to him. Center field. This will do it. Berkman wins it for St. Louis. He looked healthy at the plate and in the outfield, where he hadn't played full time in seven years. Big Puma, my goodness. Lance and third baseman David Fries provided a spark. Base hit for David Fries, and the Cardinals take the lead, and David Fries delivers. Those early season woes soon became a memory. Oh, man, welcome back. The bats began booming, and the staff stiffened up. And it's a shutout for the Cardinal left-hander, Jaime Garcia. The Cardinals win. St. Louis took over the division lead, but then came some key injuries. And he hits David Freeze. You can hear that one. Oh, boy. Pujols may be hurt. He looked like he was in severe pain. This is what you deal with. You, you deal with injuries. Everybody's going to deal with injuries throughout the year. I think it's fair to say that the Cardinals have had more than their fair share of injuries to this point. But, you know, it's just one of those things that we always had someone stepping up. The Cardinals navigated these rough waters thanks to the depth of their lineup. John Jay and Alan Craig have really filled in in the Cardinal outfield with all the injuries they have had. And it is way out of here. Alan Craig with a two-run home run gets the Cardinals on the board. Their rock behind the plate, Yadier Molina, was both a pillar of stability and a mentor to the men on the mound. I don't think you can say enough about the role that Yadier Molina has played. He's a leader. He's a guy that all the pitchers are excited about throwing to. 
a three-time All-Star and perennial Gold Glove winner, emerged at the plate with a team-high 305 average and hit for power like never before. This ball is clobbered to right field. Yadier just seems to have been getting better every year at the plate. Deep left, has a chance to leave the park. Goodbye! Molina, another home run. The Cardinals were scoring plenty of runs, but weren't much above 500 come the trade deadline, and were looking for ways to improve on the mound. As we approached the deadline, we were thinking we had a shot at the postseason, but our rotation and our, and our bullpen uh, we felt needed shoring up. It's a pretty big move today. The Cardinals have consummated an eight-player deal. When we made the large deal with Toronto, it was to do two things. One was to improve our bullpen and also add, add a starter for our rotation. But instead of getting better with the addition of the veteran pitchers, the Cardinals treaded water in August and fell into a double-digit hole behind Milwaukee. And the Brewers take two out of three from the St. Louis Cardinals. Not a good way to start this homestand. The Cardinals dropping the first two games no, of the series. Very disappointed. I'm really worried about us finishing under 500 unless we get this thing going in the right direction. Cardinals start play in St. Louis, 10 and a half games back. We had a losing streak at that time. Uh, we lost three games from the Dodgers. This should do it, and the Dodgers have a sweep. After that, we had a little meeting, uh, the veteran guys, and say, you know what, uh, I think we're better than that. They want we show. We got 32 games, I believe, at that time left, and we just want to play the best 32 game of our career. Starting pitching became lights out. Chris Carpenter just was turning into a, a madman. Swing and a miss. Carpenter goes the distance. 2 nothing shutout over Milwaukee. The bullpen is starting to solidify. Guys know their role. 3-2. Got him. Another scoreless inning. It's for Jason Mott. Just right up and down the line, guys are doing their job. Four and a half games out now in the wild card. How about this? They're the classic case of a hot team at the right time. Got closer and closer, one of the most exciting experiences that I've experienced as a manager in all the years. And the Cardinals long climb from ten and a half games behind. Incredibly, the Cardinals won 22 of their next 31 and pulled into a tie with Atlanta for the wild card lead with just one game left. We had our guy Carp, and uh, man, he carved up as one of those days where everything was working. He was strong, sharp, two hitter. We win. And the of at least a playoff game uh, tomorrow. Now they have to go into the clubhouse and wait to see what the Atlanta Braves do. And we'll keep our eye on that Philadelphia-Atlanta game. We sit in that clubhouse for 45 minutes. And the Philadelphia Phillies have ended the Braves' season. And the St. Louis Cardinals have caught them and have passed them. That celebration right there was uh, so spontaneous and sincere. I mean, all of a sudden we had done it. We were in October baseball on the last day of the year. The Cardinals prize for their relentless quest to reach the playoffs was a date with the pitching rich Phillies. Well, there's no question that the Cardinals are heavy underdogs against the powerful Phillies. By the time the division series started, it was pretty clear that the Cardinals were the second best team in the National League. But that didn't mean that a lot of people thought they would be the Phillies. Howdy, Lee, the whole gang. The Phillies played their first ace in game one and won the hand. 21 consecutive batters retired by Halliday. The deck appeared to be stacked against St. Louis once again in game two when the Phillies gave their second ace a four to nothing lead. Strikeout number eight for Lee. You can count on one finger the times that you're going to come back from four runs down against Cliff Lee. But it was obvious by now that these Cardinals had a knack for doing the unthinkable. That attitude that the boys had developed about heck or high water, they're going to play nine. That's the best example, even with Cliff Lee out there. Ring and a ground ball, base hit the left field. Here comes Terrio, and this game is tied. Cardinals, after trailing four to nothing, getting three in the fourth and one in the sixth. This was one of those teams that refuses to let you kill them off. Base hit to left field by Pujols, and the Cardinals have taken the lead five to four. A lot of people wrote us off, but you know, we went out there and we still pushed on. And in that series, our mindset is we can go out there and we can play with these guys. The Cardinals.
Orlando rally coming back and winning a critical game and have even this best of five series. If we lost that game, realistically us winning three in a row, I don't think it was possible. They would have to win two in a row after losing game three back home. And they seemed to get a boost in the next game when just about everyone and everything tried to spark a rally. And there's a squirrel that ran right in front of home plate. The native wildlife somehow seemed to spur the native son, who was on his way to becoming a postseason hero. One old pitch in the air to center field. I'm just fortunate enough to put some balls in play and just get some hits, you know, that matter. David Fries now with five runs batted in in the series. The Cardinals force game five with a five to three win. We're headed back to Philadelphia. And that set up that game five where Carp and Halliday was a dream matchup. And after Carpenter's nightmare start in game two, it was a chance for redemption. We have a classic matchup on the mound. Two of the premier pitchers of the game with the season on the line. What a great spot to be in if you're a competitor, if you like that situation, that, that stage. I was excited about it. I know Roy was excited about it. The Cardinals scored a run just two batters into the game. Shot into the right field corner. It is fair. The Cardinals lead one nothing. And one run was all Carpenter would need. Hell, it was great. We got him one run early. Carp was just spectacular. The drama and the situation on the field is increasing each inning. Great atmosphere in their house. Every inning just loud. Couldn't hear anything going on around you. Ground ball to Descalso at third. Two gone in the bottom of the ninth inning. It was just so much fun to be a part of it. I took every minute of it in. That's the first smile we've seen from Carpenter so far. I was very relaxed and really tried to take in the moment and, and it was just an unbelievable game. Ground ball to the Side. Punto has it, and the Cardinals have done it. Sheer joy for the Cardinals. What a job by Chris Carpenter. He was phenomenal tonight. Carpenter, on full rest, comes back with a brilliant pitching performance, a three-hit shutout, and the Cardinals find themselves in the National League Championship Series. Happy flight, indeed. Yes. That flight landed the Cardinals in Milwaukee where the fresh taste of a bitter regular season division rivalry still lingered. Consequently, when you've got a bunch of guys that are competing for the same thing, inevitably you're gonna have some bad blood in there. And that's what ended up happening between Milwaukee and us this year. St. Louis lost game one, and that seemed to unleash the power of Pujols. Albert Pujols, a two-run home run. The Cardinals who strike first. I had a really good chance in game one to come through for our team. I didn't, so I'm glad to contribute again to. The Cardinals took a 7-2 lead. And LaRusa managed to keep it that way with the do-or-die approach. Tony LaRusa is coming out. The bullpen has been so good and so deep. Tony LaRusa has been masterful at using that bullpen to win games. Shovels to second for him. The way Tony been handling our bullpen in the playoff is good because if you have that going, why not just keep going with the bullpen? And that pen secured the win with four and two thirds innings of one run ball. The St. Louis Cardinals have come into Miller Park and picked up a big road win. Back in St. Louis, the Cardinals used much the same formula. Freeze in the right center, pretty well hit. One that began with timely hitting. and ended with yeoman work from the Cards' core of relievers. The bullpen was doing such a good job coming in for the starting pitchers that it became the absolute strength of this team. The real key is not the handling of a pen. It's the fact that every guy came in whenever they had the responsibility of the assignment, and they fulfilled it. St. Louis took a three games to two lead in the series and returned to Milwaukee brimming with confidence. We were really comfortable going into Miller Park knowing that we had great success against them at their place. And Freeze launches one to left and there it goes. What a big, big blast by David Freeze. The Cardinals lead it four to nothing. Wow. Getting up a run is one thing. Maybe a three run home and make it a four run inning. 
changes the uh, the outlook of that game. Their hottest hitter comes through once again. His third home run and his ninth RBI in this series. Be able to sit back and watch what he did this postseason was just amazing. St. Louis became the first team ever to score first in every game of a best of seven LCS, and their stout bullpen made those early runs stand up. And there it is. The St. Louis Cardinals are headed back to the World Series. We went out there and played the game the right way and played it hard all the way down to the final out. They mob a mop on the mound as the Redbirds celebrate. You know, go out there and be a part of that was, was pretty special. What a comeback season for the St. Louis Cardinals. An amazing story. We made it into the playoffs and you know, we were able to beat the Phillies, who no one expected us to beat. And then most people thought the Brewers would beat us and then we beat them and, and here we are. It was special to me, just doing my part and helping the team get to the World Series. Uh, winning that award was great. Actually, I think deserved to go to the bullpen, but it was cool to accept that. Who would have thought about this one? Nobody gave the Cardinals a chance. Yeah! It's a remarkable story about how we got into the World Series. If there's one guarantee I can make, I can guarantee you that our club is not going to change its attitude about competing in the World Series. I expect it to be a great series. You got two great teams. We'll see what happens, but I think you just got to go out there and play baseball. And baseball is something we play very good. No doubt about that. For the Rangers, we're back in the World Series for the second straight season. The Texas Rangers win the pennant, second consecutive year. These Rangers can do everything and everything well. They're obviously a good team to be where they are. They have some big mashers in their lineup. That's belt to the left field. Line drive into the corner, fair. Seven runs in for Texas. There are no soft spots in this Ranger lineup. Absolutely amazing. They can compete offensively with this Cardinal team, and a lot of people think they're actually better. Two very highly offensive teams. The Cardinals, they're the number one slugging team in the National League. The Rangers, the number two slugging team in the American League. So we have among the best offensive teams in the game. But well, we'll see if the opposing pitchers are able to shut down either of these offenses. There's Chris Carpenter, who has been very good. A big reason why the Cardinals are still playing. Matching up against C.J. Wilson, who the Rangers, the number one starter for each of these clubs. Usually your foundation in October is supposed to be starting pitching. We haven't seen that at all this year. Offense and bullpens have really carried the day. Neither team has had a quality start in the championship series. The bullpens have been absolutely great. They're mere images of one another. If you look at both clubs, it's a very even match, so the competition is the key. They have pitchers, we have pitchers, we got hitters, they got hitters. We both want to win real bad. Good luck, you guys. And as Carpenter and the Cardinals discovered in the top of the first, sometimes you need a little luck when the ball sent screaming into the hot corner. Here is Ian Kinsler trying to get it started. Here's the 2 0 -oh pitch. Rounded down to third and off the glove of Freeze. That is a leadoff single for Ian Kinsler. Boy, what a start for the Rangers. That's how you get it going. And Texas looked to maintain the momentum by forcing the issue with one of baseball's most efficient base dealers. But the guy behind the plate, Yadier Molina, is one of the game's best at stopping the running game. We knew that they're going to be aggressive uh, uh, on the bases, especially Kinsler is a great base runner. We were ready. The, set. the runner goes. The one who swung on and missed. Throw down by Molina. Reputation. An early statement by Molina with this Rangers club that likes to run. Three pitches later, Carpenter had his own adventure on the bases, barely averting disaster. The 2 2 and the ground ball to the right side, ranging to his right, Bulls, and he feeds Carpenter, diving, and he gets his glove across the bag as he is sliding on his belly toward the base, and they get the out. What a remarkable play by Chris Carpenter. I didn't give him the pass for a throw, but knowing Carp uh, being a great athlete, I mean, he, he made an unbelievable play, and I'm just glad that he didn't get hurt. Carpenter's lucky he didn't get spiked. I'm not concerned about something bad happening. I mean, that's just 
part of the game. If I got stepped on or kicked, I'd get up and continue to go on. What a start to this World oh, Series in 2011. It's crazy. It's been crazy in it the last six weeks. In less than half an inning, you got the feeling that runs would be a valuable commodity in this game. Especially once the starters settled in. Strike three, fall right down the middle. Three scores. Not a single LCS game this year had gone this long without a run, allowing the visiting manager to strike a more passive pose. I wonder if Tony the is getting bored. He hasn't made any pitching changes yet. A starting pitcher dominated game. It looks like it's one of those nights where these number one starting pitchers have got to match zeros. Something nobody, nobody saw coming. But that would change from the bottom of the fourth, thanks to the heart of the Cardinals lineup. Let's see if Pujols can get something started here in the fourth. Against C.J. Wilson. And that got him. And Albert Pujols is on to start the inning. And the leadoff man is on. Now Matt Holliday. And a big swung on him right down the right field line. A fair ball. Pujols around second on his way to third. Holliday in the second. Two in scoring position with nobody out. And now it's up to Lance Bergman. Lance competes like a madman, never throws that bats away, he understands what the score is and how important it is to have it go your way. We had seen him do it against us for years. Here is the first real scoring opportunity of the game. Out in a frenzy right now in St. Louis. The pitch to Bergman. A swing and a bouncer fair for the first base line. Pujols will score. Holiday will score on a long single by Bergman. Two nothing Cardinals in the bottom of the fourth. The Cardinals scoring first in eight straight games in this postseason. Lance has a nice at bat. We got something going against a guy that's been pitching well on a night that runs were few and far between. Carpenter back to the hill as his team is now up two nothing going into the fifth. Very dangerous part of this Texas lineup. Beltre Cruz and Napoli. I'm out there doing the best I can to get a shutdown inning, but to give up that leadoff hit to Beltre. Shoot a line drive in the right field for a base hit. Lead off single here in the fifth inning. These guys are dangerous when you get the ball up in the strike zone. I got a couple balls up. I make a mistake to Napoli. As Napoli flies one into run, and this game is tied. Napoli shoots one way out the opposite way, and it's 2 2 in the fifth. But as teams throughout the National League knew only too well, these Cardinals respond to any challenge. David Freeze trying to give the Cardinals a lead. You know, we were in a situation where we had to get things going a little bit, and I was fortunate enough to get on base. That's well hit into the gap. In right center field, and this ball one hops the wall. Freeze has got a one out double. It's just one of those zones that the hitter gets into. He's finding out right now, and I think the whole nation's finding out how great a hitter he is. New series, and he is still hitting. He's got an incredible amount of intangible it factor, I guess is the only thing I can think to describe it. I've played with guys that have had it. They're just winners. They come through when the team needs them the most. Freeze eased into third on a wild pitch by Wilson, and CJ then put the managerial wheels in motion by fanning Molina and pitching around the number eight hitter. And it's going to take a two out something from Puto. You got Puto at the plate, Carpenter on deck a guy like Alan Craig on the bench. I know that if they put Punto on, um, I'm done. We're getting a pinch hitter. That's ball four, first and third, and Carpenter will come back to the dugout. And Alan Craig will come off the bench. I get pulled back for Craig, who's been doing a great job all year. I mean, uh, just a great offensive threat. And we'll see how Ron Washington responds. He's got a gondo if he wants him. A right-hander has had a great few weeks in the bullpen. There has been no bigger weapon in any bullpen this postseason than Alexi Ogondo. This guy has been shutting you down good. I'd watched film on him a little bit, and I just saw a guy that was blowing guys away with fastballs. And, you know, so I had an idea he was going to come out with heaters. Chased it up, 97 straight two. So I knew that I had to get my foot down early and try to put the ball in play. Runners at first and third, two outs. One ball, two strikes, and the pitch. Slash to the right field side, and a sliding attempt by Cruz, but he can't make the catch. One run is home. Porto will be held at third, and it'll go as an RBI single for Craig. And the Cardinals have a 3-2 lead. I just try to put the barrel on it make the defense make a play. I was fortunate enough to keep it fair and 
it worked out that time. And Alan Craig delivers off the bench for the Cardinals in the sixth. To get them to go ahead and knock in the sixth inning it was a dream come true, and I was just hoping that the bullpen could hold on and hold the victory for us. The pen had come to be a weapon for the Cards. And now it was up to LaRusa to use it wisely through the final nine outs of the game. Zepchinski, the left handed specialist against left handed hitters, will be coming on. We have a real good, deep, and balanced bullpen. But he's going to face right handers as Ron Washington will also answer. If you're trying to put guys in a position to succeed, so we just you look at who comes to bat that inning and you try to make it tough. The set. And the up two swing and a miss and a ball in the dirt, and the inning is over. You are now seeing what Tony La Russa does. Matching up hitter, pitcher continuously. And the bullpen continues to get it done. The bullpen threw a perfect eighth, thanks in part to Arthur Rhodes, making his World Series debut in his 20th season. We're going to the ninth. Mott coming in. Mott has been virtually unhittable this postseason. It was quite a moment for a man who had just become the Cardinals' full-time closer in September. I've been fortunate and I've been blessed to be able to be in the situation that I'm in now for the past month and a half, two months, and uh, go out there and I've been able to, you know, pitch well. The Cardinals are an out away from winning game one. Hopefully we can keep it up. We're now in the ninth. No one on. Two outs, three, two picks. Swinging a fly ball, driven to left center field. Holiday over the net. Bullpen doing everything Tony La Russa asked for. There are a lot of things falling into place for these St. Louis Cardinals. Man, that's a good beard. Oh, mm, man. <laughs> I used to not get nervous. I was just like, all right, you can do it. Now I can't breathe. I, someone told me I look like I'm watching a horror film because I'm just like, oh my God, just do it. You know? <laughs> When you save a World Series game, the next day's lunch is guaranteed to have a lot of love on the menu. This is your biggest fan. You bet. Her car looks yeah. like a parade flip. Yeah. Go Cardinals. Go Cardinals. Stop, brother. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Nasty. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thank y'all. How's the barbecue? Good. I live in Memphis in the off season. We got some pretty good barbecue there. I came in here and I was like, man, this stuff's amazing. The taste of victory was indeed sweet. But game two of the series now beckoned. Good luck. Love you, baby. Good luck, Thank you. Baby. Give me a call here in a little bit. Okay, love you. Love you, honey. Bye. Bye. I know our guys are going to go out there and uh, be aggressive. Hopefully, we can take the one tonight and go into Texas 2 0. All right, good luck tonight, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Right. Hopefully, see y'all after a total win tonight. The winner of game one had won 12 of the last 14 World Series. Texas look forward to reversing that trend with their best postseason starting pitcher over the last two years. The Rangers send Colby Lewis to the mound trying to even up this World Series. He's the only Ranger to ever win a World Series game. His opponent on the mound was making a bit of history, following in the footsteps of a baseball legend. 25-year-old left-hander Jaime Garcia becoming only the second ever Mexican-born pitcher to start a World Series game. The first one, Fernando Valenzuela, back in 1981. I grew up watching him. He was my idol. It's an honor for me. I'm so proud of that. And off we go in game two. Strike one. Once the game started, you could definitely feel that extra nervous from the World Series, and I was able to control that and use it in a good way, you know, going out there and, and giving all I had. His first World Series game, and he goes seven. Shut out in the line, just three base hits. Great job tonight by Jaime. Just fantastic. It wasn't quite Jaime mania, but it was impressive. Problem was, Lewis was just as stingy throwing six shutout innings, only adding to his postseason reputation. By far the best start of the postseason from the Rangers starters and Colby Lewis. He has been terrific. But Colby ran into trouble in the seventh, putting runners on the corners with two out. And with game one hero Alan Craig ready to pinch hit for Garcia, Ron Washington turned to his bullpen. Washington crosses the line and makes the call to the pen. And for the second time in as many nights, 
We're going to have Alexi Agando facing Alan Craig with the game potentially on the line. I couldn't believe that the same situation was unfolding. I just try to stay with my approach and not try to do too much, and you know, I worked out again. Now Gondo from the belt, the pitch to Craig. A swing and a line drive base hit. There's another RBI pinch hit for Craig. The Cardinals lead one to nothing. Alan Craig does it again. A two out pinch hit RBI single off Alexia Gondo. St. Louis carried that lead into the ninth, where Mott would seek to earn his second save. But Ian Kinsler led off with a single and once again look to jumpstart a Rangers rally by challenging Molina. There goes the runner. The throw by Molina. It is late. Very close play, but Kinsler's safe on a head first dive. I just decided I'm going to take a chance. I was in there, but he made an unbelievable throw and still almost got me. And now we'll see how the Rangers want to play with Elvis Andrews at the plate. Base hit center field. Jay has got it. They'll hold the runner. Throw will come all the way through, and that's going to allow the runner to go to second. Throw not in time. And now it's second and third, and nobody out for the Rangers. With the left-handed Hamilton at the plate, Larusa called on his lefty specialist Rhodes, hoping to hold the struggling slugger at bay. And at bat, I was looking for off speed all the way. And I think he tried to throw a slider away, um, but ended up uh, getting on the side of it. Swung on and belted. Right field. Schumacher makes the catch. Kinsler is home. Andrews over to third. The throw is late. Josh Hamilton has tied the game with a sacrifice fly. Michael Young followed with another fly deep enough to give Texas a 2 to 1 lead. And Rangers closer Neftali Feliz made it stick. Swing and a fly ball to right field. Charging his Cruz. He's there and he makes the catch. And the Rangers win game two. On a stunning ninth inning two run comeback, the Rangers have beaten the Cardinals by the score of two to one. And the World Series is even at a game apiece. A fascinating series really beginning to develop here between these two teams. From Rangers Ballpark in Arlington, it's the Texas Rangers against the St. Louis Cardinals, Game 3 of the 2011 World Series. The World Series returns to Rangers Ballpark in Arlington, tied at one game apiece. You think about the Rangers, emotional win in Game number 2, winning in their final at bat. Does this series now play to the Rangers' favor, now that the series has moved? We know what kind of ball club we have. We've been through so much this year. We flip the page and, and come ready to play today. The first two games of the series have been low scoring, but tonight the Rangers return to the hitter's haven, that is Rangers ballpark in Arlington. Right on it. Where the Rangers averaged over six runs per game. Ooh. This ballpark led the major leagues in runs scored per game, in home runs per game. It also help with the, the ball carries a little bit. Of course, I mean, it helps too to play in the warm weather. What? That doesn't go out. Going to Texas, you knew that sooner or later, both of the offense is going to explode. And sure enough, the ball began to soar right from the start. And here's Alan Craig, two for two as a pinch hitter with two RBI hits off Alexi Ogando, who gets the start tonight in right. That is a rocket into left. Cardinals as Mr. Alan Craig is some kind of hot. Get used to that home run ball, folks, because I think you're going to see a lot of that in these three games. But not over the next couple of innings, you wouldn't, as Texas starter and 14-game winner Matt Harrison settled into a groove. Another strikeout is second to the end. And Harrison makes quick work of the Cardinals in the second. Matt was being matched by Cardinals starter Kyle Loesch, who came into this start with a career 0-4 postseason record. Swung on and missed. He chased a changeup moving down and in. We head to the fourth inning. Even though this is only the fourth inning, I didn't anticipate one run being scored through the first three. This game will not end one to nothing. You 
wondering about Albert Pujols. 0 for 6 through the first two games of this series. Yes, I was off for six, but I wasn't thinking about it. I was continue to keep working hard and not changing my approach. Base hit into left. Pujols has his first World Series hit. Matt Holliday was up next, and what followed was a bang-bang play that went the Cardinals' way. Holiday ground ball, double play. Andrus Hensler, oh, pulled him off the bag, and he's safe. And we're going to get an argument as Napoli says he tagged Holiday going by. It's like Holiday tried to avoid it. He was out. Holiday was tagged a step before the yeah. bag. Yeah, he was. Got him on the shoulder. He calls you safe. You get back on the base. Those are big situations that you got to capitalize on. And St. Louis did. For after Berkman's single moved Holiday to second, the Cardinals' hottest hitter added to his impressive postseason resume. So Free's trying to make it 13 straight this postseason. The opposite way in fair. Down the right field line, Holiday will score on an RBI double by David Freeze. He's hit it 13 straight. I'm just fortunate enough to put some balls in play and find some holes, get some hits that matter, and uh, you know that's what the playoffs are all about. The Cardinals lead 2-0. And they've been able to cash in on a break. Three more runs in the fourth gave the Cardinals a 5 to nothing lead and knocked Harrison out of the game. But against Texas, no lead is safe, and the Rangers began to chip away. We knew they have a great offense. Young hits it in the air to right, and the Rangers are on the board. It's back to one. Especially at this ballpark, and with, you know, with the big right-hand hitters they have. This ball! Sudden, they're back in a trailing five to three. Now it was Loesch's turn to exit, but the Cardinals stymied any further damage with their defense. 1 0 to Kinsler, a swing and a towering fly ball down the left field line as Holiday comes over. It was a high fly ball. I knew that Napoli was running, that I might have a chance to throw him out. I caught it. Tagging is Napoli. And made a strong throw, and, and Yachty makes a you know, good catch and tag. Here's the throw. Down Mike Napoli, a double play, and the Cardinals keep their two-run lead. It worked out, it saved us a run, maybe turned a little bit of the momentum back in our direction. Swing and a bolt into the left field corner. That's gonna drive home two more. And Yachty heads for second. He'll make it with an RBI double. Cardinals now have eight runs. Still, the resilient Rangers battled back, scoring three runs in the fifth to make it a two-run game. And to keep the cards in check. Alexi Ogando would have to face his World Series nemesis, the first man in 30 years to have a pair of RBI pinch hits in a World Series. Here's Alan Craig, the guy who got the hit off Ogando, of both times to right field, both times as a pinch hitter, both times driving in a run. Ogando sets. The 2-2 pitch, fastball swung on and missed for out number one. Just swung through it this time, and Ogando won the battle. But with two men on, Ogando was far from out of it. For stepping to the plate was the mighty Pujols. He's locked in, and if he gets under one and gets the fastball a little higher, he's going to hit it out of here. I have taken so many swings in my career, so when I put a, a good swing and hit the ball really good, I knew it right away. A high fastball hit a mile to left field, way back into the bleachers and gone. That ball is absolutely by it was a good feeling, you know, running around the base, knowing that I hit a three-run home run and was able to help our, our ball club to take the big lead at that time. A three-run home run for Albert Pujols, 11-6 to six Cardinals. Ah, but Albert was just getting started. For he came up again in the seventh, locked in, and with a plan. I was really looking for a pitch to hit. Almost digging in, the lead at first by Craig. I faced Mike Gonzalez so many times in the National League when he was here, so I, I knew that he was going to challenge me with the first pitch. And the pitch to Pujols. And that one's in the air to left center field. Going back on it is Hamilton, looking up and goodbye. He has done it one more time. He's hit a three-run shot, now a two-run shot. 
And the Cardinals lead it 14 to 6 in the seventh. The game was now seemingly out of reach. All that was left was for Albert to become a part of World Series history and earn a place in the record books. I didn't know if Tony was going to take me out at that time and give it a chance to another guy because our lead was uh, huge at that moment. 15 to 7 at Cardinals. Pujols is 4 for 5 with two home runs and five RBIs. Darren Oliver threw me a couple of cutters. I knew that he was going to go to that cutter again. Two and two, the count as Oliver stares into Torrey Alvin. Out comes set. He tried through the same pitch and he left it down the middle. And here goes one in the left. How about three on the night in a row? I think that was one of Albert's prettier swings of the night. I know he hit some bombs, but the way I looked at it, how he stayed through it, what a historical night. Just tied the all-time World Series single game home run record, hits record, and RBI record, all with one swing. Babe Ruth, three home runs twice in a World Series game. Reggie Jackson in 77. Albert Pujols here tonight. Being in the same company with Babe Ruth and Reggie Jackson, of one of the guys that hit three home runs in the World Series, it's, it's unbelievable. The Cardinals thrash the Texas Rangers 16-7. Behind a historic performance from Albert Pujols, five for six with three home runs, and they have a two games to one lead in the World Series. That's what I try to do every day, to go out there and help my ball club to win. Hopefully at the end of my career I can look back and, and say, wow, you know, what a game it was in game three. was a bludgeoning last night on the part of the Cardinals as they beat the Texas Rangers. What's the best way to move beyond an experience like last night? Last night, uh, we got beat. We might have got knocked down, but we didn't get knocked out. And we will be men tonight, that's for sure. Well, they had better be. For over the last three years, the team down two games to one that had lost game four had also lost the series. It was a lot of pressure for 25-year-old Derek Holland, who had tied for the American League lead with four shutouts, but had struggled in the LCS. And Washington tried to ease the burden that was squarely on his shoulders. We always have a handshake. We always do it before the game. And once we finish that, he kind of you know, stopped me before I could walk away. And he's like, hey, I want you to go out there and pitch with your purpose like you always do. And I also wanted to reiterate to him that he have to use the inside part of the plate. And I just wanted Derek to know that he is the guy, and he's the one guy that can get it done for us. Welcome to Rangers Ballpark in Arlington, Texas, for game four of the 2011 World Series. The Cardinals right now, after last night's game, they smell it, they feel it, they taste it. Cardinals have scored first now in 10 consecutive postseason games. Off we go. And he's caught by Beltre, one out. And he took a double away from Fercal. I mean, that was huge. Beltre doesn't make that play. Fercal's a really fast guy, so he could have either gotten a double or maybe even a triple. You know, it sets the tone right there. You know, getting that leadoff out right there it changes everything. Left side in the hole. Elvis. One, two, three, first for Garrett It was a sign of things to come. Now it was up to Cardinals starter Edwin Jackson to make his stand. But with a runner on first and one out, Josh Hamilton caught one just right. That's down into the corner. And Elvis will dig in for third. Elvis to the plate. Rangers strike first in game four. It was the only run Jackson would allow through the first five innings. And with his fastball boring in on righties, Derek was proving to be even better. 95, that's as hard as Holland has been throwing since the beginning. And he throttled back and got him on a changeup. Derek Holland is showing his regular season oh! here tonight. Unlike his Ranger counterpart, Jackson was walking batters and his seventh free pass of the game in the sixth to put two men on prompted a most familiar sight. And I think they might have seen 
all that they want to see out of Edwin Jackson. On came Mitchell Boggs in relief, and the Rangers' hottest hitter, Mike Napoli, was waiting. That is Tomahawk! Way out of here to left! And it's 4-0 Texas in the sixth. It took a hit like that to make Edwin Jackson pay for the base on balls, finally. That home run was, yeah, that was huge. I knew I had everything in control, so I felt like that's all I needed. In control. Gary Collin must pitch inside, and he has tonight. Collin pitched brilliantly into the ninth, but when he issued a one-out walk, his manager made the long walk to the mound. And here comes Ron Washington. He doesn't say anything at first, and all of a sudden I was like, Wash, you know, you don't, don't take me out. You know, I got this. I, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get this double play. We're gonna be out of the game. And all of a sudden he, no, 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 son. You don't know. No, you can't. You gotta get out of this ball game. You've done long enough. You've, you've thrown all the strikes you need to do. That's all you gotta do. You getting out of here, son. Eric Holland walks off the field with a moment he'll never forget. Now it's Neftali Feliz. Three, two, delivery. Holiday strike out. The reality the Rangers had made a statement with the first game four shutout to even a series since 1952 st. Louis had run into a pitcher at the top of his game one who got some words of thanks from a legend as he left the field and over here to the left Tony, somewhat of an offbeat question, if you'll bear with me. Every now and then you hear about coaches and managers having problems with the actual phones that you guys use, a call to the bullpen. I was wondering if you've had problems with them in the past and if you thought they could be something better used than the phones that they are now. Well, you work for AT&T? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to St. Louis Cardinals baseball in game five of the World Series from Rangers Ballpark in Arlington, Texas. Tonight, it's Chris Carpenter against C.J. Wilson with the World Series tied at two games apiece. Carpenter, 8-2 and two now in the postseason. Most wins in Cardinals postseason history. He's 3-0 and oh in this postseason. C.J. Wilson is 0-3, oh and, and no one has lost four games in a single postseason. I think with the World Series tied 2-2, the players look at Game 5 like a Game 7, a sense of urgency. Game 5 is always really important. You know, when it's 2-2, two two, it's really anybody's series. It's a three-game series all of a sudden. We knew that if we got the right breaks, we would come out on top. But with two men on in the second, it was the Cardinals who got some of those cherished breaks. Left side base hit. Holiday will come to the plate. Murphy kicks it in left. And the Cardinals lead one to nothing on an RBI hit by Yadier Molina. Well, that opened the door, and Schumacher is in. Right side. Dropped by Moreland, and in to score is to make it 2-0. With Carpenter on the mound, if you get a lead, you always feel confident that you're going to win the game. True, but there was also a man at the plate who was looking to debunk that theory. There's the 2-0, and Moreland! No matter how strong a guy is against our lineup, at some point we can answer big. Breaking ball! Had their ace on the mound and Chris Carpenter. And while he pitched really well, you know, he gave up a couple of solo home runs and lost that early two run lead, and then the offense couldn't do anything else. The Cardinals tried, leaving 12 runners on base by the end of the game, as the big hit simply eluded them. Base is loaded, two out. Here's Matt Holiday. Pressure is on CJ Wilson. Our guys worked so hard to create run scoring opportunities, and Wilson, we could get some going against him, but then he'd make pitches to prevent us from adding to it. To first. We worked hard to do it, we just couldn't do it. St. Louis even got aggressive with a hit and run called by the best hitter in the game. But the pitch to him was so high they had no chance. 2-2 two, two in the seven. Go ahead and run it first, one out. If you're a manager and you have a very special player that really understands the game and can execute, you give him a lot of liberties. So Albert has the ability to put on the hit and run. Craig, pitches high, Craig out, two out. Craig 
is out on a caught stealing with Albert Pools at the plate. And now Albert is going to be intentionally walked. Bat is taken out of Pujols' hands for the third time tonight. I don't get the play at all. Huge moment in the game. Kind of a head scratcher at the time, but not as bad as some of the things that followed. How crazy is this World Series been, though? Nail-biting kind of baseball here tonight. Tied it to going to the eighth inning. So much on the line. Unbelievable, dude. Even more unbelievable was the series of events that unfolded in the eighth, starting with a potential double play ball that ended up spelling disaster for the Cardinals. Well, the inning starts with Dotel facing three right-handers and a leadoff double, and he strikes out Beltre, and Cruz is so dangerous, I uh, wanted to walk him and set up Brzezinski into left-handers. Mark Zepchinski is into the game. David Murphy's going to stay. Come on, Murph. Lefty against lefty in the pitch, a swing and a ground ball. Off the glove of Zepchinski. Yeah, yeah, go Murph, go Murph. Bounces to Punto, he bobbles. No play, and the bases are loaded. Yeah, yeah. Everything going wrong this inning for the Cardinals. The lefty Zepchinski remained in the game, despite the fact that the right-handed Napoli was at the plate. Dave and I were not heart sick about that one. He has a lot of stuff that's active in the bottom of the strike zone, so a double play was possible. Got to break him all up, and the guy's hot, and he had a big hit. Oh, baby! In the air to right center field. This ball is down and off the wall. <laughs> one run scores. Go, baby! Go, baby! Here's Cruz, and it's 4 2 Texas in the eighth. Delivers for Texas what the Cardinals have been waiting for all night. A big hit with runners in scoring position. It's possible that Napoli's at bat might have turned out differently had the message from the Cardinals dugout to the bullpen been properly received when a call went out for Mott to get ready. Well, what happened was that twice the, the bullpen didn't hear Mott's name. They heard Rosinski and they didn't hear Mott. Then I looked up there and Mott wasn't going. So I called back and said, Mott, they heard Lynn. Kinsler's coming up. Lance Lynn will enter. I wasn't going to use him unless it's an emergency, and I wasn't going to have him throw that game, reaching back for extra. So I just four and let's get Mott in here. Larusa wanted Lynn to come in for the intentional walk, and now he's going back to his bullpen. So he used Lynn just to issue the intentional walk. Wow, what a strange game here tonight. Weird inning. Just take full responsibility for the mix-ups. What more can you say? St. Louis experienced a sense of deja vu in the ninth, with still another runner in motion and Pujols at the plate. But this one ended twice as badly. 3-2, swung on and missed. Throw down, strike him out, throw him out, double play. Never really expect Albert to hit and run, especially with, with the kind of power he has. And luckily we got Albert to strike out and I was able to get rid of the ball and put it on the back. Everybody's standing at Arlington. The 1-2. Toward first, he chases it down, underhands it to first, and the ball game is over as Texas has won four to two and they lead three to two in the World Series. Seven to five, Texas, two outs in the bottom of the ninth. That defines our team. And the Cardinals are down to their final strike. The way we just kept coming back. Lance Berkman with a one and two count. Again, they're down to their last out, their last strike. It's not fun to go up there with the season on the line. If you don't come through right there, it's over with. You just kept battling. You know, I hope we're the ones smiling 24 hours from now. Let's get it done today, okay? <laughs> Indoor cage. Yeah, lights nice are exciting. I want to play just one game. That's all. Yeah. This. <laughs> we got to get it done. So, today is the day. Should I pull that out today? You keep doing what you're doing, David. It is cool, no rain in the forecast, and we're ready for game six. If 
Texas wins tonight, the Texas Ranger franchise will have its first ever World Series championship. It is one of those moments where for the Cardinals, you do get to say, you must win this or it is over. The reason why the Cardinals lost game five is they did not hit, and that has to change if they're going to force a game seven. Pujols is hitless in all of his other at-bats other than game three. It's a rematch pitching-wise of game two, a very well-pitched game with Garcia and Colby Lewis. You just sense there's a tension and unsureness, if you will, about how's this game going to develop at the very beginning. Look at Ron Washington. Is tonight the night? The Rangers gave every indication that it just might be when they set the stage for a rally in the first. First and third, nobody out early. And now it's Josh Hamilton. The thing that was obvious was that Jaime's stuff was not normal. Here's the set by Garcia, the pitch to Josh. Swung on in a hard ground ball. Threw on the right side and base hit to the left of a diving punto. Hamilton, an RBI single. And it's 1-0 Rangers, three batters into the ball game. Uh, I thought they did a good job of coming out quick and you know got that run, but we were able to kind of turn the tables on them uh, for a little bit anyway. Here is Lance Bergman. It started the seesaw battle. Man at first, two outs, and a fastball and a fly ball deep into center field. Get up, baby! Get up! Get up! Oh, yeah! Cardinals lead game six. Two to one as Bergman goes deep. It was clear that the theme of punch, counterpunch, was just beginning to unfold on what would prove to be an epic night. Now a runner at second, and there are two down. Here's a 3-2 payoff pitch at an old line. And a swing and a ball driven to left center field, and Dean Holiday racing back, it's over his head, and will bounce over the wall into the Rangers' bullpen for a ground rule double for Kinsler, and the Rangers have tied it at two. Jaime Garcia has not pitched well in the first two innings. Jaime Garcia is finished after three, allowed two runs. Out of the St. Louis bullpen comes right-hander Fernando Salas. Tony La Russa broke his own record and continues to set a new one. 67 pitching changes, the most in any Major League Baseball postseason. But this year's pitching paradigm for Tony could only be effective with a strong support group. And in the fourth, his fielders came up just a bit short. Now the 2 2. And he got under it. Fly ball into shallow left. In comes Holiday. That goes for Kyle. And Holiday drops it. And everybody is safe with Cruz going to second base. You're going to have days where players don't make the routine play. Uh, and that was a weird game because the first part of it, very unusual. St. Louis is playing some bad baseball right now. Well, you know, you look at it, the Cardinals fighting for their lives, and uh, maybe they were a little antsy. Lewis bunts. Salas has it, throws to second, and throws it into center field. Uh, we're fighting to win a World Series, and maybe we were a little antsy. And Bergman will go after the first pitch. It's knocked down Young, and he got it there. No! Pulled Lewis off the bag. Yeah, it was just kind of a weird game. I mean, there were just errors on both sides. I don't recall a stranger game under the circumstances. It was just a game that just kind of just, just definitely was not normal. Hamilton against Salas and a pop-up, which has been anything but routine tonight. You know, I was kind of bouncing around, trying to find where my feet needed to be. Freeze in fair territory. <laughs> it was kind of like a circus out there. What's going on here? Yeah, it was a pretty sloppy game early on. It's uncharacteristic of both sides. And a chopper down to first base. Young bobbles it, and everybody's safe! Each time somebody made a mistake, the other team capitalized on it. Up and in, ball four, tie game. You know, all of a sudden, they're in the seventh inning, and the game kind of cleaned up a little bit. It kind of feels like a fight, guys, where the Cardinals have been knocked down a couple of times, but Texas has been unable to put the Cardinals away. Beltre swings, drives one high and deep. Goodbye! A month.
monster home run for Nelson Cruz. Back-to-back -back home runs, 6-4 to four, Texas. Crowd stunned again. The successive shots were stunning indeed. And still another run off Dotel gave Texas what looked like a commanding cushion. Kensler, base hit. And it's a 7-4 Texas lead. The Rangers six outs away from their first ever World Series championship. You know, when they get those three runs, I thought, man, it's going to be tough. And Alan Craig gets his first at bat, taking over for the injured Matt Holliday. Uh, but our attitude in the dugout was, why not? That ball is hit in the air to left. Back at the wall. It's a two-run game. Alan Craig goes deep. A critical play was the home run that, that Alan Craig hit. Unbelievable. All of a sudden, you're only down two, and it, it two seems a lot better than three. And from there, I think guys just felt like, well, you know, let's go ahead and see if we can't make this thing interesting. Texas seven, St. Louis five. Naftali Feliz is in the game looking for his third save of the series. The Rangers three outs away. Here comes a 2-2 two -two to Terrier. Pujols is up here again in the ninth. He is 0 for 4 tonight. The pitch. And a ball lined in the left center field. A base hit. Pujols is on his way to second base and in there with a double. But most importantly, it brings in the tying run. 3 0. The pitch. High ball 4. Texas 7, St. Louis 5. One out. Who holds at second? Berkman at first. Two and two, the count on Craig. Got him looking two out. And the Rangers are one out away from the championship. Now David Freeze. Big, big spot in the game here, isn't it? You know, the, the beauty of this game, the next swing of the bat could win the game for the Cardinals or could clinch the World Series for the Rangers. The 1-1 one, one fastball, swung on and missed, one and two. He definitely blew one by me. The Rangers are a strike away. You know, last strike doesn't work out. You're watching the Rangers celebrate on your field. But it's been pretty compelling stuff. Almost all of the games, back and forth, close. Freeze waiting. One, two, and a fastball hit to right field. Going back is Cruz. Get up, baby. Get up. Get up. And, and. There's a hit. scores. Bergman scores. Freeze in the third. It's tied. Oh, mercy. The Cardinals are back. Initially, I didn't really know if Cruz caught it or not. I couldn't see, and then I heard the crowd. When I got to third, you know, I, you know, I kind of realized that, you know, we definitely just tied the game up, and uh, you know, we still got a chance at this. And we're going to extra innings, tied at seven. And now here we are in the tenth, tied at seven. Runner at first, one out, Mont and Hamilton. Hamilton has not gone deep yet in the postseason. Go ahead, run at first one out. We've always thought that, you know, in the series that, you know, Hamilton is going to, he's going to get himself one. Be ready on the first pitch. You know, you just don't know when. There's a shot in the right. Back at the track. At the wall. Gone! And it's 9-7 Texas here in the 10th. His first home run of this postseason. Kirk Gibson, Robert Redford, Josh Hamilton. <laughs> two champions going at it. We fighting to try to put away a, a nail in their coffin to win a World Series, and uh, they wouldn't let us get that nail in there. We'll get it in there, and they'll just pop right out of the coffin. We were thinking this is not looking good. The key is to get it started. 
Descalso is on to start the inning. Sometimes, you know, it works for you. Two of our young guys really, really came through for us to lead off that inning with back-to-back -back hits. And it's two on with nobody out here in the bottom of the tenth. The attitude of the guys were, you know, we don't gonna give up. We we're just gonna keep fighting. Jay, the tying run at second. Who holds the winning run at first? The Cardinals have gotten one back, but again, the Cardinals are down to their last out. Drama that is made yeah. for television and the world. And unbelievable that we come to this. Tying runs at second. The winning run is at first. And for the second time, the Cardinals are down to their final strike. One strike, one miss hit, one anything away from going home for the winner. Two balls and two strikes. As soon as you step in the batter's box, it just, the mind goes blank. Well, I really was thinking nothing. I mean, I was thinking nothing. Berkman looks very comfortable. When you're in the moment, when, it, when it's happening, you don't have that sort of perspective on it. It happens fast, and good or bad, it's over with. Two and two. Feldman ready. The pitch, and a swing and a little blooper. Drops into center for a base hit. I don't believe it. Jay will score. The game is tied. They just won't go away. For the second time in as many innings, they get a hit down to their final strike to tie the game. This is a heavyweight bout indeed. To the bottom of the 11th in a 9-9 tie. Here come the Cardinals trying to win it. Freeze leading it off. Freeze tied this game in the bottom of the ninth with a two-run triple. Three ball, two strikeout. In the air to center. Has he done it? Way back. Everybody was, was a part of something special from the first inning on. People were crying, people were laughing, you know, people were hugging and uh, people were screaming. I mean, it had every emotion possible. Uh, that game had everything in it. Let's go! Let's play nine more innings right now! We will see you tomorrow night. Many times when you have a really dramatic comeback win, everybody expects the next day you're gonna have this big advantage because you won, the other team lost, and the opposite happens. You're still celebrating. You forget to compete from square one, and the other side's got a little chip on their shoulder. Well, here we are, game seven. For the first time since 2002, the World Series going to seven games. This is a dead even competition, and you cannot be distracted by last night. As soon as I got stirring this morning, Refuse to think about last night. Last night, it was certainly an emotional roller coaster like a great heavyweight fight. I think the biggest problem will be for them to forget about game six because game six is going to go into the archives as one of the craziest games in the history of World Series. So now tonight, here we are, game seven. This is when this great game is at its best. This is what you play for. Am I nervous? Yeah, I got to be nervous. Yeah, I'm nervous, I'm excited, I'm enjoying it. And if Tony's nervous, then how can Ron Washington not be nervous? <laughs> Chris Carpenter goes for the home team. The 36-year-old righty gets a chance to start this game because of the rainout we had earlier this week. It was just meant to be, I guess. You know, I mean, it's one of those things that, you know, that rain came through and gave that one extra day for Carp. You know, everything happens for a reason. He will be pitching on short rest for only the second time in his career. It was not a good outing in game two in that division series against the Phillies. I learned a lot against Philly there in game two. There's so much adrenaline and so much emotion going on that uh, you really have to control that and try to treat it like a normal game. This is the third time in less than 10 days they face Chris Carpenter. Meanwhile, it's Matt Harrison, the young left-hander, getting the ball for the Texas Rangers. Harrison 
He was the losing pitcher in game three, the Albert Pujols game with the three homers. How many pitchers get a chance to start a game seven of the World Series? And I think he's looking at it that way. Game seven of the World Series. We've got a wild one ahead of us tonight if it's anything like what game six was all about. Yeah, we are still excited about game six, but we knew it. Um... Texas was going to bring right out of the gate, and they showed it. You know, they jumped on Carp early. Andrews takes a one-on-one. -on -one. Landris is on. Here's Hamilton. It was looking very much like the start of game six. For the Rangers were flexing their offensive muscle right off the bat. These guys come ready to play, and you know what? They had a really good ball club. We didn't expect him to come in here and roll over. There goes the base runner. And Andrews is running. Hamilton pulls the base hit. Has to dive in pools. Andrews on the move. He's being waved around third. Score, 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 score. It's an RBI double, and the Rangers strike first. Here we go, right where we left off last night. Texas is going to play their game. That's why we respected Texas so much. Swing it a fly ball to right field. Yeah. He's got to play it on a bounce. Here's the turn made by Hamilton. He'll come in to score. It's another double. And it is already two to nothing for the Texas Rangers. They put game six behind them. They came out swinging. They made things happen. There's two runs on the board. Initially, you know, Carp gave up two. And I think that the huge point here is that he didn't give up any more. Here's an 0-2. A strikeout for round number two. The one one is swung on a hit. We could award third. Charged by Freeze. And the throw in time at first. To get Cruz and in the inning. And that was big, and I think we went in the dugout saying, all right, here we go. Um, you know, let's even this up. Here we go, boys! Nice play, David. We did what we've done all along. You know, what's gotten us to this point was uh, just uh, perseverance. And that determined attitude paid dividends in the bottom of the first. When with two out, the Rangers began to dig their own hole. It's funny because I think their strategy in regard to Pujols backfired on them a little bit right there. Pujols looks at it way outside, and I mean at least a foot. It seemed like they were pitching around him, even with nobody on base in, in, the, in the bottom of the first inning. And he takes a walk. So Harrison pitching around him, it sure looked like, even with Bergman on deck. I think he was just a little bit intimidated. That's some pretty healthy respect, and I, and I felt like that because of that, Harrison may have lost his release point a little bit against me. Out of High ball three. He's going to miss. Harrison has missed with seven consecutive pitches. You know, he couldn't get a ball over the plate. Outside low. Just missed. Ball four. Back to back walks. Never easy in this 2011 World Series, is it? Next thing you know, they're in a big situation, first and second. Here comes Freeze. Here comes last night's hero, David Freeze. I was kind of assuming they were going to bust me in a little bit. Here he is in a key spot again. I like the ball out over. You know, I still wait for that, but um, they stayed in that hole they beat. Inside low, and it's a full count. 3-2. I had a pretty good idea of what, what was going to go down, and he got the barrel out on it. Where are you going to shot the left center? Get on, baby. Get on. Get in. You know, found the gap, and uh, as fast as Berkman is, you know, he got all the way around. Pohol scores. Berkman scores. This game is tied up. And David Freeze is hot, hot, hot. He was just locked in. He, he was definitely our hottest hitter in the lineup, and offensively, he carried us. A two-run double, and he is on fire. You know, Freeze come up there and put us right back in it. I was like, this, this is going to be another one of those games. We're still in last night's game. Yeah. 2-2 two, two in the first. To go out and give up two in the top, you know that's not how you want to start, but for our guys to answer right back and make it a tie game again. Let's go, boys! It's a tie game! Let's go! It makes you be able to settle down and go out there and make pitches. Which is precisely what a pro like Carpenter proceeded to do, now that he was starting fresh with an eight-inning game. He gave up two and shut the door. That's what an ace does. He didn't let the first inning affect him. He got into a little bit of trouble in the second inning. First and third, two out. But you know what? He bared down. Back to Carpenter. It was eventful, but it's still 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, I started mixing that curveball, and that's when I was out in the field saying, all right, here we go. Pitch by Carpenter. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. You know, this could be it for Texas because Carp was on. He didn't let the game, the emotion, take control of him. It was rough going in the early stages, but his offense picked him up, and now, look out, he's starting to settle in. Nothing settles a pitcher in better than a lead. And for that, the Cardinals turn to their now not-so-secret weapon. 3-2 delivery. Oh! And Craig lifts it in the air to right field. Going back is Cruz, going way back. Hey! Three to two lead. 
To get a lead in that game after game six was big for our team, and for me personally, getting a chance to start in that game was uh, was really special. Alan Craig is a, uh, a starting player who's not starting. And yeah, he will in his career. Alan Craig in the lineup because Matt Holiday is injured and he comes up with another enormous hit. Alan Craig is a big leaguer. Um, he's an all-star in the making. You know, we've said it all along, that guy, you know, should be in the starting lineup on about every team in the big leagues, and you know, he's been so huge and so clutch. What an October Alan Craig is at. It's his fourth home run of the postseason, his third in the World Series. I was giddy all day, you know, just I couldn't stop smiling about it. You know, I was just glad that I could be a part of it and help push us toward the end. Give me a speech! Give us a speech! Speech! They go to the fourth inning in Game 7 of the 2011 World Series. The Cardinals lead the Rangers 3-2. What was that pitch you hit? Hey, I did! Huh? What'd you hit? Fastball. Eight straight home teams had won a World Series Game 7. And when Texas went to the bullpen in the fifth, the Cardinals patiently made their case for becoming the ninth. Bases loaded, two outs, three-two count. Well, at that point, we were just, we just got lucky, I guess. <laughs> you know, we knew that inning was going to be a huge inning. Somehow we had to score some wrong, and, and that's what we did. Outside to make it 4-2. <laughs> Is loaded walk after an intentional walk. Four to two Cardinals. They made some mistake and we took advantage. And he hit him. And another run. Yes! Yes! That's a good time to get hit by a pitch. Take it, boys! Yeah! Oh, is this ugly? The Cardinals have scored two runs without a base hit. Yes, we didn't get any hit, but uh, to be able to score two insurance runs, that was huge. Took the pressure off Carp a little bit with three run lead, but Carp still had to go out there and get those guys out. Craig's up against the wall. He jumps and he made the catch. And Chris Carpenter gives a huge fist pump from the mound. You know, I think we needed Carp to go deep in that game. You know, even though he was on three days rest, you know, our bullpen had been used a lot in the playoffs, especially in game six. What a Braden Carp! to Cardinals, your score. When the inning finished, Dave and I were very concerned about how far to push him. Carp wanted to pitch. Yadier said he's still got a lot to work with. So that's where we sit him out. Ranking ball is in for a strike from Carpenter, who may have talked his way back into the game. It's funny, he told me when I came out after the uh, six that I was done. Unfortunately, I hung a break of ball 0-2 to, to Murphy, to which he got me out of the game anyways. And here's Tony. He's going to the bullpen. But uh, I'll tell you what, as long as I've been with Tony, he's never changed his mind and allowed me to go back out. It was amazing that he allowed me to do it. And a huge crowd responding to Chris Carpenter with a standing ovation. We go to the seventh. Cardinals lead five to two. I actually looked up in like the seventh and it was kind of like, holy cow, we're, we're up by three runs. You don't want to start counting the outs, but being human and all, he definitely started seeing how many he had left. And you know every Cardinal fan in this ballpark is doing it. They're counting outs. The count was down to three in the ninth. And with a four-run lead, the Cardinals were oh so close to the end of their incredible journey. As I was walking down the ramp, I literally took maybe two or three really slow steps and just kind of looked around at the stadium. You know, the fans are waving their towels around everything. 47 the plus on their feet. And I just literally thought to myself, this is amazing. Jason Mott on to pitch. Three outs away. The biggest key to me in the ninth inning is the first guy. Nelson Cruz, who came within about a foot of winning the World Series for Texas last night, will lead off. It just seems like you avoid that big inning if you can get the first guy, and he did. Popped up. Jay, the center fielder there. Two outs away. You know, I was at the top step with Terrio, um, counting the outs. One down and two to go. I think I remember I wasn't smiling too much because I was nervous. Two, two, two. Left side for Discalso. Just into the game. Two out. I think that's the first time all game long where I said, son of a gun, I think we're going to do this thing. This team crashed the postseason party, and they're one out of one.
That's a feeling I, I, I really can't even describe because you feel like you're so close to winning it, but you saw what happened to them the night before. No team's ever come from as far back as late in the season as the Cardinals did. They don't want to swing a fly ball to left field. Right when he hit it, I actually turned the wrong way in the outfield and I had to spin back and look over my shoulder and pick it up quick. In the air, left field, 360 turn, Craig. You know, the ball was bouncing back and forth as I was running. Craig is going back. Craig's got home. You know, I knew I was going to catch it. I knew it was over, and it was just, you know, the best feeling in the world. Ball game. World champion St. Louis Cardinals. Seeing him catch that ball and turn around and seeing Yachty on his knees and just being like, come get some, was the best feeling I've ever had in this game. Next thing I know, he's jumping on me, and I'm on the bottom of a dog pile. I looked around, somebody really strong was picking the up turn as Lance Berkman. Number 11 in 2011. <laughs> 11 World Series titles. The most in National League history. And perhaps none more improbable than this one. Ten games out, and to be able to come back when people doubt that we were going to be a world champion, I mean, we did it. It's pretty special. The confetti explodes all over the ballpark. The St. Louis Cardinals. Unless you have the opportunity to have this feeling, you don't know, and it's very hard to explain. It's just, it's an unbelievable feeling. It's, it's, it's proud to be a part of this organization. Holy God. You can't really put into words the the sense of accomplishment, the joy. Certainly the most satisfying moment I've ever had on an athletic field in my entire life, and it was great to have my wife and daughters out there to celebrate with. Can you believe that? Just a, a wonderful experience all the way around. A big, big part of what you feel is watching the joy from our players, the organization, our fans, and uh, man, it's as good as it gets. World Series most valuable player is St. Louis native David Freeze. I'm speechless, to be honest, about when I actually sit down and think about winning this thing. I've yet to grasp what we as a team accomplished. To go up there and be able to hold that World Series trophy was amazing. It came back in, celebrated, you know, popped champagne one last time. <laughs> And then, you know, we're all like, hey, we got to go outside, everybody outside. To go outside, run around the field, seeing those fans was amazing. Two days later, all of St. Louis turned out to celebrate as a sea of red blanketed the city and fans got to honor their World Series champions. See, this is amazing. literally a parting of a red sea of sorts. You just know you're doing something special and that is a chapter in the great history of Cardinal baseball in the city of St. Louis. You do the same thing in opening day, come to the stadium like this, and then you do this after you win the World Series, it's unbelievable. What these guys did so many times, elimination, it's a lesson for all of us. They never quit, took their best shot, and the best shot's a world championship, so this is very special. It was special, but bittersweet as well. For one day later, the dean of major league managers decided that there was no better way to go out than to go out on top. Having Tony at the helm as the manager for 16 seasons, in the postseason, nine out of 16 years, and to add three pennants, two world championships, it's just been a remarkable run, a remarkable story. I'm happy for him the way that he went out as a champion because he's deserved that and more. And uh, I just thank God for giving me the opportunity to play with the best manager in the game. The best manager, the best player, and a team that simply refused to quit. The Cardinals just would not quit. 
Just call them the Comeback Cardinals, defying baseball convention and the odds. Yes! It was the spirit of St. Louis embodied by one team, a world championship 